Liam Moore is the referee. It's Saints against Wigan. It's more than just a game. It's more than just 80 minutes. I, I totally agree with you. It is like a game like no other. You got a Wigan lad in charge of Wigan. You got Saints lad in charge of Saints. These games are one on emotion and passion. But you can't forget to play. I always remember being in the changing rooms with Andrew Farrell. And he said, look, when we go out there, you've got to play. Don't forget to play. And then he'd look at me and say, Tez, you just run hard. You don't need to play. But it's just one of those games that everyone gets up for. The fans turn out of the numbers, and it is an atmosphere to be enjoyed. Yeah, magic. When you let your mind drift back to days as Bart Percival kicks off late today, it's the pure magical moments of your career. What a blessing it is for everyone who's here to watch and everyone who's watching at home. Mike Cooper, who was barking out the orders in the Wigan dressing room shortly before the teams came out with the first carry of this derby. Here is Kai Pierce Paul. It really does. This game means so much to so many. And we will see passion personified over the next 80 minutes. St Helens looking for another win over their arch rivals. It's six years since Wigan last beat Saints on a good Friday. That's a cracking kick, isn't it? Downfield, Powell it was, it's picked up by Wellsby. First opportunity for Saints with ball in hand. Yeah, an early kick there from Sam Powell. We speak a lot about emotion and passion. Well, that exists in a game like this for maybe 10, 15 minutes. And Terry's exactly right. Once you come out of that, you get down to the ground and you've got to play. But St. Helens are, are renowned from starting quick and suppressing teams' yardage and their ability to make yards. A great defensive set from them there. Wigan's challenge is like Martin Gleeson said in the studio. How are they going to consistently get out their half? Conrad Hurrell, who's in terrific form. Three tries in the last couple of games, just coming back from suspension. Here is... Uh, Ignatius Parsi, and he will play a big part. He has to fill big boots, those of Alex Wormsley, of course, out with that torn hamstring. And back it goes to Lewis Dodd, and that's a high, high kick. And Percival in for it, it's bouncing around, and it's eventually picked up by Bevan French. So dangerous with ball in hand. French still going, he's still going. Billy at this from Bevan French, and just a glimpse of what he can do with a glimpse of what we can expect. Uh, and that's what gets the crowd on the edge of the seat. Every time he gets the ball, it lifts the atmosphere. And if it lifts the atmosphere in the stands, it does it on the pitch as well. Simple little wins, both teams are looking for it. An offload again from Toby King to Smithies. But you're just looking for those little marginal players that you're going to come out on top of. And it wasn't a bad kick from St. Helens. It just dropped to the wrong man with the bounce. French is electric. It's a shame his partner in crime, Jay Field's not here. Yeah, but French is enough. Well, certainly a, a signal of intent there for Wigan. Pierce Paul looking for a way through. There's the offload for King. Here is Miski on that far side. But this is expansive and ambitious start from... Wigan and it all came from that dazzling run from Bevan French. Shorrocks and Powell. And it comes wide to this left hand side for the dangerous French. Can he offload? No, he can't. Saints survive. But certainly Wigan putting down a marker. Yeah, well, plenty of bodies in motion in that set. Bevan French, he gets all of this ball. As soon as he gets all of it, all he's looking for is space in that line. He bounces across. So dangerous every time scary, he gets it. Scary to watch that coming back at you, Taz. <laughs> Atmosphere, 10 out of 10, 100 out of 100. You know, we talk about Bevan French, he's kick returns, but what about Percival and what about uh, Tommy Makes? And I think they're two of the best at returning the ball in the league. Very direct, they haven't got maybe the footwork or they don't use the footwork like Bevan French, but certainly got the power. Here is Parsi, the tackle coming in, just shy of halfway, St Helens. Liam Farrell, who will be right up there in the tackle camp, you can be absolutely certain of that Stirling brought down just inside the Wigan half of the field. Roby it is, and it'll be Dodd left-footed, unless another high one. And French underneath this and can't come up with it. Did it come off a Wigan hand? No, it came off Jack Wellesby. It's a little let off there for Wigan, but I think we've just seen the first couple of sets from St Helens. 
the way they're going to play two identical kicks from Lewis Dodd. Yeah, just carrying the ball with intent, giving Lewis Dodd an opportunity to put a kick up that they could challenge for. But I want to go back to Wigan's last set. Again, something Martin Gleeson said, offloads. Well, there was an offload from Mike Cooper, an offload from Kai Pierce Paul off a short ball from Joe Shorrocks. Now, if you want an indication how Wigan might get out of the half, that might well be the way they need to play Stuart here. First Good Friday game at the stadium for four years. Look at that for Paul Wellens, who signed for Saints in 1996 as a 16-year-old, played 499 games for his hometown club. What a moment for him, his first Saints Wigan derby as a coach. On the last Wigan with Powell, just inside that St Helens half. It's been a good start and a kick downfield. Should be an easy take, and it is for Tommy Maker. So we play coming up. Well, five minutes gone, no points on the board. Early thoughts. Well, he said about Paul Wellens first of all. So he said about Paul Wellens 55 times he played in this game, but like he can't control it now. The nerves that he had as a player to the nerves that he has as a coach, and the thoughts on this game, the way it started, saying to like John said, they're putting some kicks up, they're attacking Bevan French, they're just chewing up the meters up the middle. Look, you know that the game will be end-to-end, -end. both sides ripping in. No one on the whole back whatsoever, and the crowd don't expect it. Hurl with the offload, low max now for Wells beyond halfway, and that was a high tackle. First penalty goes to St. Sam Powell, the guilty party. Yeah, it was a nice piece of ball movement. St. Helens just subtly moving the ball around, Jack Wells be just across field, and Powell just drifts high. It's just a bit of a lazy arm from Sam Powell, nothing in it. We talk about passion, right, and aggression in going into this game, but we're looking at two of the most disciplined teams in the competition, defensively immaculate teams. St. Helens average only 12 points conceded this year, Wigan just 11. Now that you put Huddersfield in a bracket with them, but we're looking at two examples of how to defend cohesively here in Super League. Matty Lee's best field position that either side has had with ball in hand. And St Helens will have first crack at the Wigan line. Morgan Knowles right on the edge of that Wigan 20. Perfect conditions. Over 24,000 on a cloud in the sky. And Lomax looking for Sione Matautia. Back in the same side to miss the win over Wakefield. Uh, part of concussion protocols. He'll be a big hit again for St Helens here, as will Ignatius Parsi, looking to turn and offload as always. Burn in there, Shorrox in there, Smithies in there with the tackle. Quick play the ball, quick hands as well. But Wigan out of the line quickly. It was Toby King, wasn't it, on Sione Matantia? Last one. What can Saints do with this? It was a poor tackle, a poor pass from Roby. And Wellsby picks it up. Uh, and it's with Parsi, and Parsi will have to put the kick through, and uh, it ends up in the hands of Bevan French, which is a rare error from Saints on the last, and Wigan defend and defend well. Well, Miski did a decent job, it was him that come in and shut the play down from Saints as they look to shift it to his side. And then when the big fella gets all of his ball and kicks it, well, it's not the right man to, to do that job at the end of the set, but... It's what happens on the back of that. They didn't get the kick away that they wanted, but they've got to defend this now. Okay, ours 40 points in the win over Hull FC, putting them fourth in the table ahead of Wigan. Uh, and uh, Saints, of course, set restart. So, a chance here maybe for Wigan to build. Is that knock on? And the referee said no, it was interference to play the ball. Let's have a look. Well, the ref's saying that you've got to, you've got to work with us. And he said there's just interference there as he was getting up from Matty Lees. That's a, I think it's a pretty tough call. Uh, but they've just got to get on with it. You know, St. Helens here defensively. Don't like conceding penalties. But you've got to credit Wigan with carrying the ball strong. Look, the defensive effort it takes for both of these sides to be good is huge. So I think the spaces may come at the back end of this game. But for people watching at home, expect this to be tight. But just take in the beauty of two teams that play so much pride in the effort and intent in the defence. Well, the intensity is right up there, and it will be from minute one to minute 18. So Helens have given away a set restart, they've then given away 
a penalty. But a chance here with Smith, that's a good pass. The dummy, the ball will go inside. And Harry Smith will strike first in the Good Friday derby. Brilliant play from Wigan on the short side. Pass, pass, try. Wigan are ahead. Well, he's pure class, I think, Harry Smith. He spots it, and I think it was Barney that was saying before and about what pressure will be on him. With Joe Shorrocks playing in the house, but I think Harry Smith has been a standout player this year. He's come up with 10 try assists, and then he creates one for himself. He goes down that short side, comes up with a lovely ball to Jake Wardle, who's got decent balance, and he goes through. You can just see him. He gets the ball. He goes straight, catches Conrad Hurrell out. Jake Wardle goes through, and as soon as he passes that ball, Harry Smith to Jake Wardle, he knows that there's an opportunity. If he keeps on tracking up the middle, you can see he goes through the line, and Wardle, when's the time is right, he passes that ball, but it's all about that attacking share that you want in these big games. He scored tries in three or four home games, Harry Smith, and it's really noticeable, it's been mentioned uh, with Brian and the boys beforehand, up here as well, the Wigan will target St Helens' right edge defence. They see Conrad Hurrell defensively as a weak link. And he was there, and Smith scores the try. Smith adds the extras. And Wigan, with that first real attack, leads 6 0. Yeah, Terry's so right. Harry Smith digging into the line's a problem for Paul Wellens. When Harry Smith digs into the line, you need your defenders to be nimble on the feet. Comrade Hurrell's a lazy, a lazy defensive decision from him. He got caught ball watching, got caught on his heels. Tommy Makinson then left with a really almost impossible decision to make. But that's the reward you get for when you dig into the line, you make people like this man, Comrade Hurrell, come up with decisions. And if there is an area to go at, maybe it's him not quite coming up with the goods there in what's been a really intense start to a fantastic game look conrad hurdle is destructive when he's got the ball isn't he when he carries the ball he's so so strong i think when people go in they just want it like any big man like laterally you struggle well you take his strength away by running near him making him work hard if you've got a big guy make him tackle get him into tackles put traffic around him tire him out then his carries become less effective but the net result there was, well, a defensive lapse from Conrad Hurrell and Wigan are on the board. And they're on the ball here with Mike Cooper. Certainly targeted Hurrell, that was no doubt. I wonder whether that would be a big part of, of the Wigan game plan today. We shall see. Farrell, midway inside his own half of the field, but a perfect start for Wigan. Here is uh, Morgan Smithies, that famous Wigan number 13 on his back. Farrell. A Lachlan and the like, and Smith goes to the air. The spiral on that, that's a brilliant kick, and it was well watched and well taken uh, by Jack Wells. Well, he seemed to position himself underneath that, but it was a wicked oh. kick. Hold. Great take, wasn't it? Just you know, when somebody's confident, you can sense it. The body language is confident. Well, Jack Wellsby's got that. He could have dropped that. He could drop that five times in a game and he'd retain his confidence. That unwavering confidence is what I admire about Jack Wells being a number of young players in Super League, but him in particular, Stuart. Well, there goes uh, Conrad Hurrell with the ball, again making good yardage. Roby, James Roby, loves these occasions. There's the offload for Lewis Dodd. It manages to escape the challenge there of Smithies just inside the Wigan half of the field. Couple of tackles left in this set. Roby quick play the ball and Lomax on that far side is at Mark Percival. On the last 6 0 Wigan lead, that try from uh, Harry Smith. Lomax goes to the air this time. Um, it was well taken by Abbas Miski uh, in on the wing. Did well. Well, Saints won't worry about what the scoreboard says. You can see that their reaction is just look. Let's get back to it. Let's get through our set to six. We'll kick to the corner. Whatever our game plan was, the amount of push they have with the man who's getting the ball. But the Wigan team, the forwards are just really taking it. Two Saints, centre field, running hard, been aggressive when they carry the ball. 
noticeable as well part of Wigan's game plan is they're really trying to play the ball quickly the speed of the game at the moment is certainly suiting Wigan and they're trying to do it as soon as they or as quickly as they can I think if Paul Wellens had a criticism of his team here maybe the defensive read on that right edge but also the speed of the run yeah he's just got away from St Helens and in conditions like this it's you know it's a beautiful day that saps your energy so St Helens have got to address that and quickly well, it's been a pulsating start to this derby. Incredible to think, mighty Super League derbies between these great rivals. Makinson will run the ball out for Saints, of course. Mr. Gallant, Warmsley, that's a big miss, but no Jay Field or Kate Cust or Willie Isa for, for Wigan either. Matautia just shy of halfway again for the Saints, trailing 6-0. The ball will go the short side and Dodd with a dummy looking for a way through. It was well read by Shorrocks and by Smithies. It had to be two. Last tackle. And Lomax this time will go high. But not the best of kicks by Johnny Lomax. Out on the full. Wigan get it back. Ironic cheers from the home faithful leading 6 0 Wigan. Yes, yeah, so reliable Johnny Lomax. Just gets that wrong. We've seen two errors from St. Helens. Johnny Lomax kick out on the full here. Miski putting his foot in a really smart play. If he catches that, that's out anyway. And James Roby's pass. Now two experienced players for St. Helens coming up with errors here. So I love this Wigan team because they're tough, they're resilient. They've got troops missing and they just never get put away by anybody. And in a game like this, how good's that as a backstop? Both these sides, in fact, as a backstop. Well, Smithies. Well, they are winning the ruck, aren't they? That ruck speed is all important. And Wigan are tearing Saints apart down the middle, but there's the error. And it was a forward pass as well. There wasn't much there, I'm afraid, that Bevan French could do about that. First mistake. First real error for Wigan, and that'll be respite for Saints for sure. Yeah, I think the situation was rescued here when Tommy Makinson goes in. Bevan French can just send him, tries to get the ball to to Marshall, but what about the run from Morgan Smithies, up the guts, taking it to Saints, behind the run. And that's, you know, what Tommy Makinson's done there is the reaction, as a great carry from Smithies, Tez, absolutely right, and that's the rook speed that Wigan have generated. But Tommy Makinson's decision there is a reflection on not being quite sure what's going to happen on the inside of the line. Well, that's one way to deal with it, isn't it? Shut it down. Percival, strong run straight from the scrub. 6-0, Wigan in front, 16 minutes, and those 16 minutes have just flown by. But Wigan deserving to be in front at this stage, if that there's no doubt. Roby and Lomax on the short side, suspicion of a forward pass there. Matautia grasping hold of the ball, and it's play on. Suspicion it was forward. Again they go the short side, Percival back inside. Here is Dodd and Morgan Knowles burning there with power to make the tackle just outside the Wigan 20. Saints looking to find a way through and Dodd again inside. But that's a good really read. good tackle. Good read from Mike Cooper. It he was. cut that down, didn't he? he? Just spotted it straight away. And eventually, Matty Lees does play the ball. And Lomax finds Harold, but Harold is all wrapped up, does offload for Wellesby. Wellesby puts a little kick through, and it's taken by Shorrex right in front of the post, and another really good defensive set from Wigan. Yeah, and a bright start from Joe Shorrex, a lot of pressure on him in the halves. Saints concede a penalty here for a high tackle, I think it's Ignatius Parsi. As I said, a bright start from Joe Shorrex. A couple of nice touches with the ball, a short pass to Kai Pierce ball. And Parsi just coming to close that rook down and to make it slow, catches Shorrocks round the head. And that's a penalty, a relieving penalty, a feature of this first opening exchanges for St. Helens is just relieving bits of play, maybe poor skill, penalties. And, and that's just let Wigan grow into the game. Yeah, the, the wound, the wound of a war, and this always will be. Well, Mike Cooper, he, he caught that one when he yeah, come up with that great inside shot. Farrell just manages to offload there. It looked like he was going to lose the ball. Yeah, look at that. As is always the case, Wigan fans and Saints fans sat together. There will be banter. Yeah. 
He can always be. is. Absolutely sure. Always is. Both sides of the Pennines today. Banter full households, you'd imagine. <laughs> Shorrocks. Yeah, been pressed so far. Joe Shorrocks. He had four matches on loan with Lee, Joe Shorrocks. Won three of them, including that win over St. Helens. He scored a try in that game against Saints as well. Yeah, he's a tidy player, and we're going to certainly look to move the ball. Joe Shorrocks. Timing not quite right there, but what he can do is just move the ball around subtly for Wigan. He does that when he plays loose forward, like Matty Pete said. French, that's a really good kick inside from uh, Bevan French under pressure. Oh, but Lomax completely left it there. If well, Bevan French had got a boot off that, he was over. He's got try. He got away with it. There was three cents players around, they all, just left all, it. all waiting for someone to jump on it. There was nothing on when Bevan French kicks the ball on the right hand side. There's absolutely nothing on. Look at this, the Conrad Hurrell still going up to halfway. And that's what Conrad Hurrell gives you. And that's what he's in the team for, yeah. to do that, to be destructive with the ball. And there's no doubt how destructive that man is. Hopperwarty. Well, Saints will hope that Will Hopperwarty is their lucky charm once more. Every game that Saints have played, when Hopperwarty has played, they've won. That's not many. 15 games Will Hopperwarty's played for Saints, and they've won the lot. There he is. He is the lucky charm. At the moment, it's Wigan deservedly leading by six points to nil. James Bell on for Ignatius Parson. Low match now with a little kick towards the try line. And, and it was taken well by Marshall. And Marshall's in free space, and it was an important tackle again, this time from Lewis Dodd. A massive tackle, thank you. Where yeah. Marshall was gone he there. Was, he was. St. He's a good player. He is, isn't he? St. Helens repetitive with the kicking game, putting it in corners. Yeah. But Wigan have just picked up scraps, found little chinks in the line. Certainly, Bevan French finding one. Liam Marshall nearly aware of that. They're getting some joy yeah. from those kicks to the corner, aren't they, Wigan? Well, they're challenging. Wigan to bring the ball away, aren't they? They trap him in a corner. Your, your defence can get a lot tighter. But the way that Wigan is spreading the ball, that man kicking. What a kick. What a kick from Harry Smith. Yeah, Look where Will Hopperwarty oh. is. Right on his own try line. Well, well Harry kick, kicks the ball more than anybody in Super League. Kicks for more metres than anybody in Super League. He will be the main threat this and afternoon. And it's not just yardage kicks. Wigan are top of the charts in terms of tries from kicks. So St. Helens not had to field any of those good ball kicks yet. Well, Harry Smith's kicking game against Lee was fantastic. And look at Wigan's D. Look at that intent from Wigan. Well, Tommy Makinson seems to have a little problem. Uh, and Gemma can tell us more. Yeah, just keep your eye on Tommy Makinson. You can see he is in a lot of pain. It looks like it's his left knee. He just uh, received treatment in back play there. But he's shaking his head. He does not want to come off here today. I'm sure general keepers across that that would be a blow for St. Helens, of course. No match with the kick downfield, but I, I think there's no doubt that Matt Pete, the Wigan coach, will be absolutely delighted with the way his team have competed and played in this opening quarter. Yeah, for loads of ways they've been clean, tidy, disciplined defensively, turned St. Helens away with the defence when they've needed to, and then they've come up with just little bits of magic. Bevan French with his little break, Marshall nearly making a break, and then a clinical piece of play from Harry Smith that's unlocked St. Helens. A great start from both teams, from both teams, but Wigan will be delighted here. Well, I think the disappointing thing for, for Saints and Paul Wellens is Wigan again target this short side. Marshall's got some space if he wants it through the gap. Oh, the offload, it couldn't be taken there by Wardle. This time they, they took the gamble and it didn't pay off. And that's twice Wigan have tried. St. Helens have presented him with the illusion of space or the opportunity we're going to have tried to take it the issue is they've come up with two errors trying you can only do that so many times against the champion team before you get burned i was going to say i think the disappointing thing for paul wellens is that, that with ball in hand saints have been well they've lacked a cutting edge well they've been forced into some errors and let, let's be honest as well you know, you play here at the DW Stadium, it's pack three of the stands are all supporting you. Wigan are going to come out firing. Saints have got a match and blow for blow. They've had the better of the field position, you would say, Saints, in this game. But they find themselves behind on the scoreboard. 6-0, it is. 23 minutes on the clock. Yeah, and for the, for, for, for the possession that Saints have had and the ball that Saints have had, they've not really looked like penetrating that Wigan defence. 
They're trying again here with, with Lomax running across the line, throws out the dummy. Well read it was, Roby with a quick play of the ball. Wellsby and Harrell gets it on to Makinson. Makinson back inside and the ball goes to ground, but was it a knock on by Bevan French? Yeah, I think you're this right. It's the big call list for Liam Moore. The Saints going to get another set. I think you're right. It's, it's brilliant defence, isn't it? You know, the ball shifted over. Marshall comes in, you think that Tommy Makinson's going to score. Then that inside pressure pushing up comes the ball. I think it comes off Bevan French's hands. Yeah. yeah. And what about the skill from Hurrell? Fantastic. The skill from Makinson, incredible. And then the skill from Sirenen to keep that ball alive. It's quite fortunate maybe Saints have got this. But they earned the right through the subtlety of the hands. Great offload. Great take from Sirenen. Awareness to keep the ball alive. And that forces... French to make a mistake, it's not his fault, it's a very difficult no. ball. A close and St Helens have okay, come, can they get closer, can they cross that Wigan try line? Out of the back of the scrum. Oh, it was on out the back, it was a two on one. Yeah, if they got the ball out there. Oh, they missed that. They missed a trick St Helens for sure. Wellsby, Knowles right in front of the post. 25 minutes gone, Wigan's defence has been superb when it's had to be in this big derby. Ball goes inside for Sirenen, but again, no way through. Ethan Havard with the tackle, Roby. Bell, that was a poor pass, and it was well read by Johnny Lomax. Yeah, Toby King only pulled the trigger and got Lomax straight away. That is the old-fashioned hospital pass. Wellsby with the kick through, but again, in ineffective. And St Helens coming up empty-handed again, and they've had a chance, they've had another chance, and they've had another chance, and Wigan having none of it. Yep, Wigan only concede two tries average a game, so you've got to get used to that. St Helens have got to get used to the fact that they're going to get turned away, that they're not going to score points at will. That's how well Wigan defend their own line, so St Helens don't need to be frustrated. As they've done so well over the last four years, be patient, trust in the process, get to the back end of the game, and they'll get opportunities. Power from Dummy half. Still midway inside their own half, Wigan. But Smith again, who's being allowed a lot of time to get these spiraling kicks away, and it was well watched by Will Hopalati. Uh, but Saints, is it Saints' attack being disappointing, or is it Wigan's defence being so good? Well, Wigan's outside backs have, have come up with some really good reads. Saints 100% have missed the chance when he had a two-on-one. Johnny Lomax went for the short ball, the ball was out the back. But you know, when you're playing in a game that's so quick, in an atmosphere like this, you will make mistakes. And I don't think Saints have attacked well all year, Stuart, really. I don't think their attacks really got, got going to the levels we expect. But what they did in a performance against Huddersfield a few weeks back, is start to build a defensive structure that works for them. And Wells Wells be under pressure, drops the ball, it's picked up by Marshall. And at the moment, St. Helens are a... Well, they're a little, yeah, I'm going to say they're a little bit all over the place. They're more than that. And Jake that, Waddle. Yeah, and that's maybe when they've been scrutinised and put under pressure. One, if you attack and your three, timing's not quite right, you come up with errors like Jack Wellsby does there. And I think that's ultimately been the issue with St. Helens' attack all year so far. Move now! Just to show how, how high quality it's been from Wigan. They've had one real opportunity. They took it, they scored. Well, that's, that's the difference sometimes of winning and losing, isn't it? The opportunities that present themselves, you've got to take them in big games. And defensively, they look relatively comfortable, haven't they? Yeah, the patient and the connected defensively, both sides are in the main. But we're going to have just looked, I think they've played the ball quicker, they've created a little bit more carnage and moved the ball subtly, like this through Joe Shorrocks to Kai Pierce Paul. Well, the, I think that might well have been a late hit. It's Mark Percival. Mark Percival comes out of the line, and I think he goes straight for Bevan French. He's done that on two occasions in this game. He's come out of the line, he's not gone for the man with the ball, he's looking at Bevan French out of the back. That's the deterrent that he is. He has to be careful, though, because when he does that, he leaves Lewis Dog one-on-one one with Kai Pierce ball. Kai Pierce ball dropped to his outside shoulder. Percival being aggressive, great, I understand it. Bevan French is a real threat. You've got to get it right, you can't concede penalties. But what he's done there is left Lewis Dodd isolated. Now, Lewis Dodd's got a massive tackle to make here. Kai Pierce Paul is strong and has an offload. Something for people at home to just be aware of. Well, last time St Helens gave away a penalty in a decent attacking position. 
Wigan punish them and score through Harry Smith. Approaching the half hour mark at the DW, 6 0, and they come again. Allison, an opportunity close to that St Helens try line. If they get another one now, will be reward for all the effort that's been put in. O'Neill. Here is Shorrocks, and he was nearly through the gap, playing at standoff. Of course, Joe Shorrocks. O'Neill on his own goes for that try line. Wigan with another penalty. Another penalty against the Hells. Well, you get penalties away when you're on your line and you feel under pressure. And Saints certainly feel under pressure. We're going to go for two points here. Matty Pete and Thomas Lulawai. Well, they'll be really impressed with the opening half hour of this game. Well, everything's gone right for Wigan. Yeah. But they've earned the right. Cost they've earned the right. And, yeah, and they've played quickly. They've played with intensity. They've scrutinised St. Helens and maybe forced St. Helens and drew penalties from St. Helens through how they've attacked. So credit to Wigan for Paul Wellens, yeah, Matt Pete's opposite number. Look, he'll certainly be focused on discipline. And, and the timing of the penalties that St. Helens have, con St. Helens have conceded here have been real momentum killers in terms of them building a performance here. Well, without doubt, the right decision. Just to... Well, take the sting out of the yeah, game. I'm just about to say exactly the same thing. Just takes the sting out of it, and it means that we're going to two scores clear of St Helens with ten minutes to go in the first half that, that we're going to have had the better of in attack and defence, they have been the better team. Well, like John said, they've got three penalties away, Saints, they've missed 11 tackles, we're going to make three breaks, all the stats seem to be with them, it's all off the back of hard work, and the leadership of that man in the side, Harry Smith. Harry Smith increases the lead, it's Harry Smith 8, Wigan 8, St Helens Wigan have earned the right to attack by how they've defended as well. St. Helens have had a number of opportunities. St. Helens have had a fair amount of field position and Paul Wellens, and Laura Ferzenu will be asking of his players to just be that little bit more clinical or actually be patient and humble enough to wait for an opportunity to present itself. A strong start from Wigan. There'll be no panic by St. Helens, but they certainly got just a few things they need to tidy up here. A rival passion in a Wigan Saints derby especially on Good Friday. Keep but Wigan up. with the advantage, an 8-0 advantage, and it could be, it could be a crucial advantage as we go into the last 10 minutes of the half. And, you know, Matt Pete was saying that since Monday, their focus has just been on one thing, on getting it right, on concentrating, on discipline. Of course, Matt Pete has been part of the Wigan fabric for 15 years. Um, these Move are the moments that he looks forward to. Yeah, everyone who, whether you're Wigan or order from St. Helens, you, you look forward to this fixture. They brought LMS on now, Four. who's involved in that Move tackle. Well, he's away. been brought on oh, now to lift the tempo of Saints and probably unsettle some of the Wigan forwards, Four which team. he always does. That Shorrocks kicking early in the tackle camp. But look at that chase. Oh, yeah. Look at that chase. He's got absolutely nowhere to go, Jack Wellsby. You've got to say that Wigan, so far, have got everything right. Every facet of this game has been spot on from the Wigan Warriors. They've been accurate, the detail has been great, and they've competed incredibly hard, which is just, it's just a given for a good Friday fixture. As I said, if there's been anything that's scratchy, it's a few parts of St Helens' game, but no stress. Look, if you're playing in this game now and you're St Helens, as commentators now, we want to amplify that. You're out there, you're not stressed. It's 8 0. You've just got to yeah. be patient. It'll yeah. come. Well, low match for that. A little dummy. Good defence. Nice ball. Wardle and Smithies. Dodd goes to the corner, but it's an easy take for Bevan French. And the chase isn't the quickest either, is it? It won't be disappointed with turning the ball over there. I don't think the last players in where St Helens have turned the ball over has been the issue. It's more this now. The numbers in the rook. That's a controlled one. That's what a controlled rook looks like. But there's been too many that haven't looked like that for St Helens. And the game's just got a bit quick. 
and offloads yeah. like Toby King there. We've seen a number of those, and that just disrupts the defensive line. No Again, way. You know what you're going to get from Toby King? Yeah. He's come up with two in this game. I think he's made 16 previously to this game. He is the best in Super League. You know what you've got to do with him. And they're going to have a go. Wigan are having a go as Cade Ellis uh, finds a way through. I was going to say, uh, St. Helens, you look at the, the, the tackles that have gone in so far. Lee's 26, Knowles 26, Roby 24. Wigan's top tackler is on 18. And, and that then plays for St. Helens. That shows where the game's been played. Brilliant again from Smith. And you've got to say, we, 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 we one thing that we're going to touch on. The battle between the two scrum halves. Harry Smith, 23 years of age. Regan, Lewis Dodd, 21 years of age. Both from Witness. Both products, one of Halton Farmworth, one of Halton Horn. Do you know, I can throw a few others into there. Mark Percival. Yep. Mark Percival, George Delaney, George who's Delaney. on the bench. Brad O'Neill, who's on Wigan. One shot Terry O'Connor. <laughs> Promoting yeah. the Witness, lads. Uh, honestly, you like you see... It does produce some crap. It's it? produ <laughs> with this Holton Farm form, it's producing some fabulous players. Well, there's no doubt that Harry Smith is running the show at the moment. Here's Conrad Harrell looking for a way through for St. Helens. There's the offload. Brilliantly for Makington. Up against Bevan French. Makington goes for the corner. French makes the tackle. And he goes into touch. Well, that's the so best opportunity that Saints have had in this game. It was Conrad Harrell with the offload. Tommy Makington, Arrow towards the corner but Bevan French you shall not pass and he didn't well we said last night that who can who can say the wingers can't defend you know he gets this ball Tommy Makinson and he knows and he doesn't look like he's moving freely I'll be honest as well but Marshall coming over the top of French he tries to get on the outside of him Bevan French comes up with a tackle the tackle's complete he's going for the line and Marshall big play from him yeah, well, and those defensive efforts are the things that, that keep your score two, two scores a game. That extra effort, fantastic. Well, Batty Pete celebrating yes. there yeah. as if Wigan had well, scored a try. Why wouldn't you? Absolutely. Yeah. Why wouldn't you? Yeah. Two of your best because that's players. Because that's what he was about, wasn't well, it? Listen, there's one, there's one guy who played in these games with number 13 on his back who loved every minute of these battles. It's Andrew Farrelly. <laughs> It is the Wigan assistant coach, Sean O'Loughlin. Uh, Lockers, this is pretty good. Yeah, it's, uh, it's great to watch. It's pretty nervous being down here on touchline, but, yeah, it's a fantastic occasion, and it's turned out to be a fantastic game as well. It seems that you've got everything right so far. You're dictating the pace of the game. Um, yeah, I think these kind of games are that fast and furious. You, you kind of just about getting your kicks away. The people just hold it in, and you start to get points at some point. But, yeah, we're, we're, we're happy how it's going, but... Saints are not far behind, there's neither there. I think they'd be pretty happy where it's going too. What a tackle from Bevan French. Oh, I, was, I was just about getting mic'd up before I was running on under the sticks again. <laughs> <laughs> Unbelievable effort. I think I just caught back enemy then. It's as good as it's as good as a try and it just beats the, the boost it gives the boys as well is, is awesome. Sean, sure, thanks so much. Cheers, thank you. Yeah, big defensive efforts are as powerful as a try, aren't they? Yeah. For your energy. You know, watching Bevan French and Liam Marshall chase back. Tommy Makinson, who's renowned for finishing in those areas. Also, as you both oh, know, as you both know in games like this, it just gives everybody in the yeah, team a massively. huge lift. If you, see, if you see your wingers and your outside backs... Oh, hang on a sec, Lomax is through. He may have support, Johnny Lomax. Lomax, oh, it's knocked down by Farrell. Here we go. How oh. on earth did St Helens not score there? But it may get even worse. French breaking. French still going. French still going. Oh, 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 first of all from Farrell. Secondly, well, Bevan oh. French gets this ball here. And he sets off on field. And I think it's Matty Lees that saves the day. I think he was loitering in ten behind the play. What we're looking at here are incredible extra defensive efforts. Liam Farrell to knock the ball down, and then Bevan French makes the break, and Matty Lees with the chase back. Just exquisite rugby league. What a game! What a derby this is turning out to be. And we've still got three minutes or so to go for half time. Make it and denied brilliantly by French. But for all the tea in Wigan. It looked like a try as Lomax broke through with Lewis Dodd in support. And what a crucial tie that would have been to score, but what a crucial time it is to keep Saints out. Yeah, it was a look off the back of that, but huge defensive players.
Huge defensive plays from both sides. And there's Smith. That's difficult. That's tough. Hopperwati. Oh, oh, it's just knocked on there by Pierce Paul. Saints get it back, but my. Well, he's a big guy. Pierce Paul on the crossfield kick, yeah. isn't he? He does ever so well. Just can't quite keep hold of it because he had support on the inside. Yeah, and let's talk about Liam Farrell tracking back. How big's that touch from him? That's a try. Louis not under the sticks there. One, I think this play here from Matilis is even bigger. Massive, yeah. Both massive. I think it's fair to say. But it's lived up to its billing. Did you ever doubt it? No. You never doubt these fixtures. What a first half we've had, still a minute to go. Three, Wigan three with the together. only try through Harry Smith, oh, who's also kicked oh. a goal and a penalty. Saints have had two fantastic opportunities oh. and nearly another one there as McCarthy Scarsbrook denied by Pierce Paul's tackle. Just a few opportunities coming the way of St Helens in the closing stages and Wells be trying to uh, fashion another one, but he's pulled into touch by Jake Shorrocks and this first half is a half where Wigan have got everything spot on. Yeah, well, good defence, wasn't it, from Joe Shorrox? Finds himself defending over on the right-hand side. He gets all the Wells beat, spins him around, throws him off the field of play. Big defensive effort just before half-time. Yeah, and I think Wigan will be happy for half-time to come here because Saints are just growing here, aren't they? They're just growing yeah. into the game. Half-time's going to come at a good time for Wigan here. Well, they have the chances through Makinson. There's Matty P, who will be thrilled. He's nil St Helens, and he leads by eight points to nil. And there is the hooter to bring to an end a fabulous first half in front of over 24,000 here at the DW Stadium. Harry Smith has been outstanding. Paul Wellens has some words of wisdom to dish out at half-time. St Helens could have scored through making some didn't could have and probably should have scored through Dodd, but didn't. And Wigan have the advantage. It's been magnificent. And there's more to come. At half time, it's Wigan 8. St. Helens 7. Stuart, thank you very much. Yes, there has been enough if, buts, and maybes to keep us occupied during our half time analysis, which will be in the company of Barry McDermott and Martin Gleeson, a man who has starred for both St. Helens and the Wigan Warriors, who have an 8 0 half time lead. All the points through Harry Smith. Half analysis on the way after this. So important for the Wigan Warriors, there he is. And Bevan Fred's breaking from deep, but also defensively with a try saving tackle on Tommy Makinson. Saints finding a way. Low backs involved in everything in the closing stages of the half, but they've been milled in that first 40 by their arch rivals. And Wigan defensively are right up there this year in Super League. They've only uh, conceded 12 tries in seven games and they're going to have to keep up that superb effort in the second half if they want to keep out Saints 8-0 can Saints come back well more of the same yes they can I, I agree with Barry like, you look at the players your Jack Wells leads your Lomaxes your Dodds your Robies all those key positions throwing their Morgan Knowles yes they can come back if you take your foot off the accelerator and switch off for a second, Saints will be the side that'll get you. What have they got to do, St Helens, John? Take a chance. Make a chance. Take a chance. They created two at the back end of that first half. Didn't convert one. On the flip to that, we're going to have created one opportunity and taken it. These big games are defined by small moments. Very few chances often present themselves. Saints might only get another couple. And because of the scoreboard, they're going to have to take them now. Here is Hurrell, who so effective once more with ball in hand. Brought down on halfway, Smithies is put in a yard of work. A real war horse in that first half, Morgan Smithies. Dodd uh, with a high hanging kick, and Bevan French it is who feeds Abbas Miski, who'll try and break down field. But there's LMS and Bell and Lees pushing him back, pushing him back, and pushing it back. And if there's ever any doubt about the intensity levels, this second half we've just had those doubts well let's see if they can be physical do you know for the every set 
Saints line speed normally very good. LMS, like I said in the first half, when he comes on, he's captain of enthusiasm. That play the ball's a bit too quick, though. Well, that's what I was going to say. You're fine having aggression, and you've got to control your contact. But then you've got to absolutely dominate the speed of the game down to the floor. And that's maybe where St. Helens, if anywhere, were a little poor in that first half. Cade Ellis brought down inside his own half of the field, and it will be Harry Smith who dictated pretty much everything in this game. Ball allowed to bounce, but it goes the way of St. Helens. Wellesby feeds. Hopawati, but again the Wigan chase is good and positive. And again it was a brilliant kick as well, it was spiralling everywhere. It was quality, so when Jack Wellsby, I think it was, who didn't go for it, that was the reason. This kicking game has been quality. Harry Smith's control against Lee was fantastic. Pretty much won Wigan that game with his control. His kicking game here has been nearly flawless, and it's just made St. Helens have to come out of bad parts of the field. Look, they're more than comfortable with doing this grind, by the way. That's why they're champions. They're more than comfortable in these small. Harold. But again, another good defensive set from Wigan. Dodd with the kick downfield. Bevan French, here is Miski. 8 0, Wigan in front. And uh, we're joined, delighted to say, by the St Helens assistant coach, Laurent Fresinou. Uh, Laurent, work to do. Yeah, there's obviously a few, few work to do uh, to win that game, but uh, what we talk about at halftime is uh, we create enough opportunities in the first 40 minutes uh, compared to, to them. So. We want to stick to the process and go set for set and uh, execute better when uh, we've got that type of opportunities. And I guess taking those chances when they come along, which you didn't do in the first half. Yes, definitely, definitely. But uh, the positive thing is we create the opportunity. So, uh, yeah, we definitely need to take our chance. Laura, thank you. Thank you. Another great towering kick from Smithies and uh, Wellsby in the end has to wrap the ball around and King is brought down. Toby King has come up with he it. Did, he came up so with the ball. It was watched by Jack Wellsby. But these kicks, I've got to say, the, the kicks of Smith are causing more problems to St. Helens than the kicks of Doddar for Wigan. And yeah, Harry Smith's kicking game has been great. Wigan have chased with, with intensity. It's applied a lot of pressure to St. Helens. And that's what top level rugby league looks like. In contrast to last night's game, this is top level. Crunching tackles once yeah. again. Well, if they're not trying to whack Saints, they're catching and they're driving them back. Look at that line speed. Farrell and Wardle making sure that Conrad Harrell isn't going anywhere very quickly. Well, if you can hit someone harder and you're running at them fast and they're running at you, nine times out of ten, you're going to win that collision. And Wigan defensively have been solid, haven't they? From the start. Five minutes gone in the second half. 8-0 it is. And well, look at that, just 29 metres yep. carrying the ball. They've been really struggling. The Dodd's kick swirls in the, the slight breeze. Bevan French brings it down and, and Wigan will start. Decent set midway inside their own half. St Helens have started their sets close to their own line in the second half. Yep. Yeah, and that, that's sometimes the rhythm of a game. You know, you have to work hard to wrestle to get field position. St. Ellen's haven't had a chance here yet to get that. They'll get an opportunity, and like Lauren Fezzenu said, when they get there, they've got to be clinical. 8-0 Wigan lead, let's go pitch side. Jenna has news. Yeah, at half-time, Brian Carney mentioned that it was hard to hear his guess. Well, I'm on the touchline, and I can tell you it's hard to hear anything at all. In my time covering the game, I don't think I've witnessed an atmosphere quite like this here at the DW Stadium today, and that is because there is 24,000... 275 fans here, the biggest home attendance since 2005, and that was on Good Friday 18 years ago. Jenna, thank you. Brilliant news. St. Helens selling 6,000 tickets, and you know, I think everybody, even this early in the season, realising. You know, the fans turn up, and, it, and obviously it, it translates onto the field, the players lift. They come out for the warm-up, it erupts, you go back in the changing rooms, 
you listen to the coach, you come out and you just want to get stuck in. Well, again, so far this game in the second half being played at Wigan's pace and being played mostly in the St. Helens half of the field. Eight points to nil. Saints have got to find a way somehow to score twice. What we've seen here is the reverse of the first half. The St. Helens had a majority of field position in the, in the first half. They've dominated field position. Well, and it just takes, like I said, a period of time to get it back. And Wigan, through French and through Marshall, just chewing metres off the St. Helens team. But it's a process, Stuart, and you have to work hard to get field position back. Well, Wigan try. Wigan get the first score of the second oh. half. You feel that the way the game's gone, it could be a long way back for St. Helens. Let's see. Shorrocks with a little uh, offload for Kai Pierce Paul. O'Neill. Been very impressed with Morgan Smithies today. With a lot of work, a lot of work unseen. Smith again. French. Never quite know what he's going to do. Good tackle from Matautia on Bevan French. The ball will inevitably go to the boot of Harry Smith, who goes to that far side. Makinson watches it well, but again, the set from Wigan. Look where St Helens are starting theirs. Yeah, but again, just all the experience from Makinson to get that. Look, the last two sets that Saints have had the ball, they made 29 metres, 27 metres in similar position let's see how far they can get away from the line all the energy and that defense seems to be with the warriors at the minute searing and trying ever so hard to to punch a hole in that wiggins line well of course everyone will well we'll never forget that epic grand final in 2020 with the winning try from jack wellsby in the very last second as the siren went and Tommy Makinson drop goal rebounded off the post. Are we going to see anything near that for drama? We've certainly been matched for the intensity. And Dodd again gets the kick away, bounces kindly, does it? Liam Marshall yeah, forced to backtrack and what to chase like. But it's the territory game as well, isn't it? 23 metres they made. You know that, that it's really difficult when you're in this situation. Like Saints have just got to stop them dead. George Delaney now is onto the field. You know, he's a youngster. I talked about him before. He's absolutely quality, this lad. He's only 19 years of age, prop forward. Every carry he comes up with, it's a run to bust. Watch out for him. Yeah, and that's where, you know, when you're stuck in your half, you need big ball carries. Delaney's certainly one, but this is maybe where St. Helens miss Alex Wormsley, isn't he? He's that guy who can just change the game. Offload for Miski. Now, Wigan giving it a go with, with Smith. The kick through, the chase is on. Leon Marshall, it was a good idea. And we remember that combination in the Challenge Cup final, don't we? When Wigan beat Huddersfield, but it, it was a good idea I trying think a something for, different. Is it a late tackle, though? Well, just yeah. on halfway. Well, we're going to have to have a look at this. Let's yeah, see Liam what Liam Moore yeah. spotted that we haven't. St. Helens, it's cost them, hasn't it, this year, oh, discipline. You know, a few late hits in the Leeds game, so Matautia and Sirin and Band. And we're going to see another late hit, I think it's on Shorrocks by Matautia. That's what he got banned for in the Leeds game. It's very close to being legal. Referees deemed it illegal. And that penalty just gives Wigan an extended period of time now attacking the St. Helens line. It's just a little bit late. And it's just a margin that, that Matauti's maybe got wrong a couple of times this year. What a chance then for Wigan. One. Move. Back on back. Oh. Eight nil. Oh, Ten minutes gone in the second half. And this is Two. perfect Move. field position for Wigan to strike again oh. off the back of another bit of indiscipline from St Helens. Shorrocks, that's a great pass, and it's well taken, brilliantly taken by Miski. Yeah, didn't he do well to catch that ball, then it went behind him. Kane Ellis. Still time, still an opportunity, Shorrocks. French it is, about the try, and it's another try, and it's Toby King with the try, and Wigan extend their lead. 
Sends a bit of indiscipline from St. Helens. Sione Matantia with a latish hit of Joe Shorrox. And Saints pay a heavy, heavy price because Wigan strike first again, this time in the second half. Toby King with his fourth try of the season. Yeah, it was a great line from Toby King. But it all started with the old discipline from St. Holland. Joe Shorrox has had a great game, just attracting the attention of Metautia. That was the penalty. That gave Wigan field position. And then at this stage here, Mark Percival turns in. Lewis Dodd turns in. And then it's a fantastic line from Toby King. Slight disconnect in the edges. What you need there is Will Opoati to follow Mark Percival in. He doesn't. What a try from King. Unbelievable from Wigan. Two chances, two tries, class. And that's the decision. If you see a winger go in, you're going to get caught in no man's land if you don't follow him. And Matty Pete knows that could be a big play, big moment in the game for them. They've come out of the second half, the Warriors, they've had a massive 12 minutes. 12 nil. Was. It was a, a bit of good discipline, and as John Wilkins said, Sioni Matauti has, has been on the line, hasn't he? Sometimes he's gone over the line, sometimes he hasn't. That was marginal, I think, but I think Liam Moore got it right. It's, he competes hard, St Helens compete hard, and, and the challenge is when that competition strays the boundaries of what's legal within the game. St Helens maybe just got that wrong a little bit this year. It is marginal, but it is a penalty. It is. And then Wigan have been clinical. And Smith has been clinical with the boot all afternoon. It's 14 points to nil. Wigan lead against St Helens. And this was the moment. Yeah, the Tauti. One yeah. the Tauti just put the pressure on Joe. Well, the reason why they signed him because they play like this. And you know, when you look at the Warriors, I think you put this try, Toby King obviously scores it, but you can put that try down to the field position that they've got, where they've restricted metres from Saints, they've had the ball, they've got a penalty, they've got Saints on the ropes, 14 points behind in a big game like this is. A little difference between St. Helens and Wigan here. I think the edges for Wigan have been connected. If we look at the Wigan edges, Miski and Marshall have come up with some big reads and come up with something. On the opposite of that, we've had Conrad Hull turning, Tommy Makinson not following, Mark Percival turning, Will Hopalati not following. A marginal disconnect defensively for Paul Wellens' edge defenders. 14 0. I thought the first try of the second half for many reasons, but just because how big the game is could be absolutely crucial. But Wigan have dominated in this second half. Yeah, they've been, they've been very good. They've come out with a bit between the teeth, haven't they? How important will that penalty be? Kick from Shorex here, just looking for distance, really. I think John Wilkin is spot on now. Saints have got to have a go. One. They've got to make a chance. They've got to take a chance. Well, they're always dangerous when they're, the backs are against the wall, aren't they? That's when you'll see him at the best. Good carry from Percival. Two. Move on, there he is. Well, yeah. There's our great friend. Oh. Yeah. He looks Eddie. happy. Is he, is he away? Well, he used to say never right off the Saints. He said this wins it for Warrington when Westwood scored and we went and beat him. So he did write us off. I'm calling it, Eddie. You wrote us off. <laughs> well, never a true word. You, you just don't write off the Saints, do you? No. But 14 0 down and. You've got to say, with, with 25 minutes to go, they're going to have to up it. They're going to have to up their game. Champ Crunching tackle on Lomax. And there's Michael Smith, the World Dart champion, huge St Helens fan. Not smiling at the moment as Dodd goes towards the corner. It was well watched and well taken by Liam Marshall. We're going to have to be as accurate as Michael Smith is. Oh. And maybe Wigan just being loose. And this is the first time we've looked down this end of the field, haven't we? St. Helens now, this is where they'll look to apply pressure. And defensively, just keep Wigan down this end of the field. What a run from King. Look at the pressure he's relieved. 20 yards he went from the play the ball there. Again. Well, two to one again. Two strike centres, that's what they've got. And again, King. <laughs> no, he's just acknowledging that some of his forwards may be a bit tired. Well, what started off 
poorly as far as the set was concerned. Yeah, has yeah. ended up with Saints coming up with the ball 10 yards from the road try line. And you mentioned Wardler King. I made a note earlier on going through the teams. They're the cornerstone. They're becoming the cornerstone. And they're so important to what we're going to do. Oh, well, yeah. They've, they've played well, they've defended well, and they've carried strong. So the two centres have done a great job. Wardler and King. King with a lovely line for a try. You know, and, and you just need strike players to come up with big plays and it's not necessarily tries like toby king who's in shot here scored it's more those carries coming out of your half that have really made we can look effective here in the second half farrell wrapping up makers and there's the the assist from ethan havard and saints at the moment are going nowhere but they do have the players to create something oh. that tie. Yeah, was that a nice was tie on conrad Hurrell. And it's Brad Singleton who'll have to be careful. You remember, Singleton was sent off, wasn't he? Oh, oh. Against Saints at Magic Weekend. Well, good foot. That's good footwork. Conrad Hurrell's dropping on the ground. He's got a swinging arm that's hit him. Just a penalty, it looks like. It's just a penalty, but he'll miss, he'll miss games <laughs> next week or the week after. It's no good for St. Helens. Coming over this ball and for sure, Brad Singleton, look, he's just applying pressure from the inside. Yeah. would be surprised if the referee has a word with Singleton, well, calms see what the happens. situation down. Liam Moore's going to have a word with Brad Singleton. Time's off. Gonna... Is it going to be it's anything relax, more than relax. a word? It's relax. Let me explain it. I appreciate his losing height and going to floor. It's curless, mate. Just got to be very careful you come and tap. It's open hand, it's curless, but very careful. Well, the ref's saying that just because, just for the viewers, he's saying that it's curless, he had an open hand, so there was no intention. Normally, when you see somebody with a big swinging arm, they clench the fist and they, they go in. He certainly doesn't miss him. He is falling down. It's a solid contact with his head, though, yeah. isn't it? You know, that's yeah. it's dangerous. Well, there's George Delaney's first carry. Delaney, 19 years of age. Halton. Farnworth, Hornets, Three. off the conveyor belt, as many of these St. Helens players are. Saints picking and pitching from the witness area, but their, their choices have been pretty good. Delaney is another one. I think St. Helens have been mugged in the rough by Wigan. They've really slowed it down. No team plays the ball slower than St. Helens in Super League. So teams just consistently hold them down, apply Move. pressure. In fact, Wigan and St. Helens, two slowest play the balls in the competition, weirdly. Broby and Lomax. That's quick, that's quick from Saints. Last tackle. Can they find a way? They're trailing 14-0, they've got to find a way soon if they want to get back. Switch play inside for Syrenin on the short side. Wellsby dabbed it forward, Wardle dabbed it forward, and in the end, discretion the better pass as Bevan French runs the ball out, and Wigan will have to drop out from underneath their post for the first time well, it was in fortunate. this derby. It was fortunate, wasn't it? It was a relatively poor kick from Wellsby. Wardle then just got it trapped under his feet and a stroke of fortune from what was really a poor kick from Jack Wellsby and this is what St Helens won they, they, they? they seem to be playing with a bit more speed now don't they coming up for an hour do they have to score here do yeah. they have to score here they've got to score in the next five minutes for me well let's see if they do hesitant as well from the dropout they're starting on halfway here Delaney with the That's chance how you run your ball isn't it Great carry again. Just let this register. It's a 19 year old lad. That yeah. a set restart. Now, yeah, just talking of which, Sharon O'Connor, Sam Walters, also from the witness area, now playing regularly in the first team. Leeds Rhinos, Leeds against Huddersfield Sunday at Heavenly rounds off our epic Easter weekend. Release. And before that, it's York against Leeds. It's the Women's Super League season gets underway. Repeat of last season's grand final. Saints know all about grand finals. They've won four on the spin. They're history makers. They're looking to make history here as Harold takes the short pass from uh, Wellsby. This is as good as it's got for St. Helens in the second half. 
Harrell gets up very gingerly. Little kick through for Don and Lomax gets the ball down. Johnny Lomax for St. Helens. They're back in it. Lomax thinks he scored. So does the referee, Liam Moore. It'll be down to the video ref. It's a big decision with an hour gone in this Good Friday derby. Life call the try. If you could just pause it on the foot, please. Pause it there. Everybody to the left hand side, I'm concerned about his onside. So we can go on from here. That's so it's tight on here. So he takes possession of the ball. He's still got it there. Slow it down. Keep going. Keep going. Keep going. Thank you. I've now made my decision. Well, we all reckon St. Helens had to score in that set. Ben Saylor, the video referee. It was an easy decision. Johnny Lomax has got St. Helens back into this derby. And they have finally scored. It's taken them 60 minutes, but we have a game, gents. Well, it was all about speed. The last five minutes, Saints have really had a pop at this wig inside. They've looked, took the short sides. They've come up with a brilliant kick here from Dodd. He just looks over his left shoulder, he sees Johnny Lomax, and he's key, or they're key. Yeah, and Lomax flattens up, doesn't he? Lomax is screaming for that. And, and you credit to Wigan's defence, you often see when you're struggling to team a breakdown, Lomax and Dodd struggling to break Wigan down, resort to a kick. Well, it was an accurate kick from Dodd. What a finish from Lomax. And it needs to be an accurate kick too from Mark Percival. 19 minutes to go. And we're back to within eight points. Wigan leads 14-6, coming up for 62 minutes on the clock. Well, we said when your back's against the wall, you want your big players to step up. Dodd puts in a, a perfect kick here. It was called for by Johnny Lomax in front of those Saints fans. And now they're back in the game. They're totally believed. 19 minutes to go. And the Warriors, well, let me tell you, I've been in this situation when we've been in front on the scoreboard you're playing against the same side and all of a sudden you're thinking right lads come on we've got it all on here we have got it all on what we're gonna need to do is be squeaky clean as well the penalty from singleton the high tackle on hurrell well that was the opportunity and the invitation that saint helens wanted and boy have they taken it passing back on huge hit from kai pierce paul what a game this has been and we've still got 18 minutes to go St. Helens back in it, 14 points to six. Goal to. Joey Lussock is on, and he'll give St. Helens a, a different bit of impetus. Three. Yeah, he always comes Three. on, doesn't he? Doesn't play big minutes, but he certainly helps the Saint side in their attack. Then looking to shift that ball in, the little pump. This is what we're going to have done well. This picture here, three people in a tackle, really slow controlled rooks, and it just makes it difficult for St. Helens to get a grip in the game. Again, Sirenen on his back, relatively slow rook, and that's what we're going to look for in the, the, the last 18 minutes of this game. Dog goes high, watch carefully and superbly by Bevan French. The chase is a good one, and he's knocked on. Bevan yeah, French is knocked on, and all of a sudden, there's a different oh, feel about yeah. this Good Friday oh, derby. Oh, oh, oh. Jack Wellsby took it upon himself to chase him down. Do you know, normally, if Bevan French gets the ball, you don't want to break the line. But he tries to be physical with him. He was physical with him, and he forces the error. Well, it's them two, wasn't it, in 2020? Jack Wellsby chased the kick, Bevan yeah. French slip. Jack Wellsby chased the kick, Bevan, Bevan French slip. It's not 2020 grand final, but this is a massive game, and that is a massive moment, Stuart. And this is a huge set coming up for St. Helens, who are attempting to go back to back and possibly get to within maybe two or four points. They go the short side, and Lomax finds Wellsby. Wellsby looking for a way through, across the line he goes, still going Jack Wellsby. Well read by... Brad Singleton, inside that Wigan 20, they just scored, it took them an hour to score. Can it take them just a few minutes longer to get their second? 14 points to six, it's been a thriller. As we hoped for, well, as we expected, and they haven't let us down. Here is Morgan Knowles, 
right in front of the post. So 12 yards out, Lussick. Here is Lomax, Lomax with a short pass, Purcell all wrapped up again defensively. So Pearl from Toby King. So a couple of tackles left in this set for the Saints. Again, Singleton in there, busy since he came on. Sam Powell back on with the tackle. Lussick on the last. Lomax, Lomax puts a little kick through, and it was well read by Shorrocks. And Shorrocks does well. Shorrocks does really well. And Wigan take the bounce. And take note of how slow every single rook was there. Wigan happy just to push the letter of the law right to the nth degree. Slow rooks down rather than concede a quick one. They'd rather concede a penalty, like any team in Super League would, rather concede a penalty Oof. there than give a quick rook away. Parsi with the hit. Oh, how physical is this going to turn into? Straight over the top. Oh. These sort of challenges. This is where you earn your money, let yeah. me tell you. You can feel the shudder from the tackles up here on the gantry. On the last, Wigan running it. French with space. Now Marshall with speed. Marshall with the kick inside. It's a good one. It bounces awkwardly, and it's well read by Jack Wells. The fortune just about well, favouring the Brave. Well, didn't he just have to be calm then when that ball was kicked over? He chose to run the ball on the last play. He tried it. It didn't quite come off. Well to be at the back to save the situation. Yeah, without labouring the point, Wigan have done an incredible job defensively putting numbers in tackles. You know, St. Helens have looked at maybe a bit flat and off it with their attack. It's nearly impossible unless you get quick rooks. Oh, make it some make it some. Syrian, a bit of space, but who's there to make the tackle for Harry Smith? But he had support, he had Hurrell outside him. And here is Conrad Hurrell. He's made some good yardage again as Hurrell does so. Last tackle. Midway inside the Wigan half. 14 minutes on the clock. And that clock is ticking. Dodd goes to the air. Here comes Miski. What a take. What a take by Abbas Miski under huge pressure. From Matt Percival. Well, it's a genuine contest. Both of them going for the ball. There's a problem with him here. Miski. Then he land awkwardly under that pressure but first job is to execute that that catch and he certainly did that release him now to play ball ball two Toby King desperate for a quick play of the ball then trying to urge the referee into giving the penalty away well, will the conditions certainly the best day for Super League that we've seen so far this season warm it'll be very warm pitch side as well I wonder whether the conditions may play a part as we approach the last 10 minutes. Oh, yes. Energy levels are going to be tested. The intensity of the game has been high. Oh. Loose pass there. I think it was from Sam Powell. Smith seems just to get the ball away. Wells be looking to burrow his way through. 12 and a half minutes to go. There's the offload for Hopawati. Hopawati reaches halfway. And Saints have just simply got to go for it. They've yeah. got to score twice. And that, that offload, people may say it's a brave offload. It's gained him another 20 metres. Mark Percival onto the ball. And then Matty Lees has just come back on to give his punch centre field now for Saints in the final stages. Make him so. 14 points to six, just 12 minutes to go. Fantastic derby, this has turned out to be. Two tackles left in the set for the Saints. Dodd, and that's a good pass out, taken well by Hopperati. Did well there in the end to get the ball back inside for Percival. Last one again, what are Saints going to do? They're going to chip it short towards this corner. Miski goes up for it, it's knocked on, and it's picked up by... It looks like Morgan Knowles has got it in the corner for St. Helens. Has Knowles got the try off the back of an error from Miski? Again, the video ref will make the call. What a game, but is it game on? Ben Saylor will make the decision. We have a live call of a try, could just pause on the kick. You keep it going from there, I'm happy that everybody there is on side. Just go on from there. 
That's a challenge to the ball. That's a clear challenge. Both players are up to the ball. That's backwards of St. Helens. It's picked up cleanly. If we go on from here, please. Still in possession. Still in possession there. Still in. Still in possession. Right. Can I have another angle on this? This is the one, probably. Nice and slow. It's in his possession there. It's still in possession. He's in the field of play. Keep it going. Paul's there. Thank you. I've now made my decision. Wow. Incredible. Incredible. It looks like he lost the ball as he was about to ground the ball. It's not a try. Wigan escape. Morgan Knowles and St Helens thought they'd scored, but they haven't. He lost the ball in the act of putting it down. He didn't lose the ball. Joe Shorrocks has come up with an absolute worldie. A worldie of a tackle. That's a big moment. That's a when big moment in this about, derby. Talk about win. these games. Look, Liam Marshall, Bevan French has chased back. Liam Farrell knocking a ball down. And one of the biggest defensive players in the biggest stage you will see yeah. from this man. Joe Shorrocks, incredible effort. One. He was scoring that all day, wasn't he? Wow. That's, no, no. That, that's huge, huge play. I don't think Shorrocks actually put his hand on the ball, but he, he just wants to get his body he did in front enough, of with anything. He did enough to, to force Knowles you, into stretching. And you had that, you had the Marshall one and the Bevan French down the other end of the field in the first half. Yeah. Big moment. He gets his hand on it. He doesn't just put pressure. He forces the ball out. It's massive. It's such a big play. If you win a game like this as a player, when you're in a game like this and you make defensive players like that, you've earned the right to go on and win from here. Well, let's be honest. Over the years, and even now, the voice is allowed that, that we should possibly think about getting rid of the video referee. But the video ref is there for moments like that. Because everybody, well, I would say 99% of the stadium thought that was a try. Yeah. Yeah, no, it was fantastic. It was Apart great. From Joe Shorrocks. Yeah. But Joe Shorrocks didn't give up. The message from Wigan here is don't give up on players. Yeah. You oh, there's the mistake. Jack Wellsby puts it down. I don't think he was expecting the pass from Johnny Lomax. And in the space of two minutes, there's this game and there's the momentum turn. Yeah, well, they put themselves under the pump, haven't they? Johnny Lomax, he was expecting Jack Wellsby to carry it. Jack Wellsby was expecting the ball to go in front of him. Shorrocks. To be fair to Matt P, he said it wasn't a gamble playing Joe Shorrocks at six at standoff. He was there, he'll just be there. You put out the little short passes, he'll keep the play going, but defensively, he just may well have saved Wigan. And now, on attack, Wigan here. And has the ball gone to ground? No, it's Sirenen and Harry Smith. It's been a bit of a square up in back play. The referee's just going to have a look at it. Sirenen seemed to be caught up in the Wigan attacking Stop line. No one cares, Sirenen. <laughs> You'd imagine that there's some, somewhat of an altercation. There's an accusation that he's lifted Morgan Smithers into a different, a dangerous position. Smithers doesn't like it. Yeah, I've got. Yeah. Says that. It's going to be a penalty, isn't it? The, yeah. the ball's gone. Is it going to be any more? Sirenen's late. He yeah. lands on his hands. So in my opinion, it's a penalty. I'm going to speak to him. The ball's gone, yeah, and what you do is unnecessary. Yeah. Like Brad Singleton down there, it's curless in my opinion. It's a penalty, be very careful. OK, Johnny. Well, I've got to say, really good referee by Liam Moore. Yeah, he's one of the best, isn't he? The way that he manages the game, the way just, that he deals with players. Just use some common sense yeah. sometimes, and that was, a, that was a good call. As it was with Brad Singleton before, it was careless. But they didn't take the two. They go for the four, which have put the game beyond. Oh, the what a chance! Oh, he's out. He's Matalti. Matalti has come up on the wrong side of it. It was Havard with the ball, and Sioni Matalti is in trouble here. Well, you've got to brace yourself, having your own contact, Matalti. Well, he's cut Bevan French in two on a couple of occasions in this game. 
He's come off the line. He's saw the gamble. He's shot up. And all he's tried to do is get his body in front and stop the momentum of Ethan Havard before he gets in his stride. Unfortunately, he's come out of second best here. Yeah. Look, Sione Metaltz here, as, as many competitive players in the back row, as Paul Wellens and Matt Pete well know, they have a disregard for their own bodies. Play the game at an intensity and with a ferocity that he has no regard for their own safety. And it's one of the things we admire about our sport, isn't it? It's that commitment, defensive commitment. And Sione Metaltz has got himself in a spot of bother here with, with his commitment. Well, don't forget that he's only just come back into the side after missing last week's game because of concussion, because of a, a, a failed HIA. Yeah, no. Well, he, he only knows one way to play the game, doesn't yeah. he? You'll never stop him. Whether he's coming back from having a hair tire, he's gone into this game full throttle, just wants to belt somebody. Sam. You can see there the concern about this panel's camp of players. Will have to work to him. Uh, and Conrad Hurrell just holding the hand there of, of Sione Matauta. It may be a, it may be quite a lengthy delay because quite rightly they won't take yeah. any chances. As long as Sione Matauta is okay, that's all that matters. Yeah. Well, the medical staff from both sides, I think, are, are, are on the field making sure that he's getting the best attention. Yeah, Paul Wallens will be concerned, concerned for the welfare of his players. Also concerned for the outcome of this game, nine minutes left. Well, and, and look, we're gonna we're gonna have been exceptional. Yeah. Um, they've controlled the speed of the game. They've really, I think, dominated the ruck in, 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 in a lot of ways. Committed tackles. We very much slowed the game down to a snail's pace. We time. talked about it early on in the game that Wigan were dictating the pace, and that has been all the way through. Well, we've talked a lot about Harry Smith and, and how good he has been, and Joe Shorricks in that unfamiliar position, how good he has been. But I think that you look at the forward pack, they've kept it nice and simple in the middle of the field, they've took it to him. Joe Shorricks has had a, a decent game and a very good game of just doing his normal job. Not thinking that he's a he's an over expansive sort of like half back because he's got the six jersey on in this game. He's done his job, you, and that's why Matty Pete said before the game, I'm confident with him going out and doing forget, that position. Don't forget, Terry John, that Joe Shorrocks wasn't anywhere near the 17. That's why he was on loan at Lee for four games. Well, he, went, he went to Lee and smashed it, he did, and then he's come back and played really well. Yeah. And he can play, he can kick, <laughs> he's got a really broad set of skills, so I didn't feel like he would be a problem you know jay field in your team over shorrox of course there's an x factor there but joe shorrox has maybe come up with the get the game breaking moment here so as much as we laud and we celebrate jay field going the length of the field his tackle on morgan knows if you win a comp if you win a game that tackle can often be the reason we all thought it was it was 16 uh, 14 10 didn't we all thought it was 14 10. Well, do you know, people talk about character and, and how players react well to adversity. Well, he was sent out on loan. He had a job to do. He had to earn his way back into the, the Warrior side. He played very, very well. He talked to anyone who was involved with Lee, and they said that he came in and he was brilliant. Well, Sione Matauti are just receiving treatment. They will, they will take their time. So let's just remind you uh, of the tries that we've seen so far today. Harry yeah. Smith with the first one for Un Wigan. Unreal, dug into the line, got Conrad Hull flat on his heels and then followed up his pass. And it was all about Harry Smith, wasn't it? That first half, not only did he score the try, convert the try, kicked a penalty as well. And then we saw Wigan clinical. The second chance they'd created, it was an unbelievable line from Tony King, catching St. Helens being disconnected. Now St. Helens now, where are they? How are they feeling at this moment? Almost out of the game, well, maybe not. Lewis Dodd, little left foot kick, Johnny Lomax with the chase. And that moment there, we thought, right, St. Helens are back in this. Lomax flattening up for the kick. And, and, and at this point here, St. Helens are coming back strong. Well, this game's been won on two other moments. And the moments that it was won, first one, or the second one was Joe Shorrix coming up with that it's on massive, Morgan Hall. Huge. And then in the first half, the Bevan French and Liam Marshall when they stopped Tommy Makington from scoring in the corner. Well, they're gonna, they're, they're, without a shadow of a doubt, they're gonna take their time. 
That's the only Matout here. 14 points to six, Wigan leading. It's nine minutes to go in this fabulous Good Friday derby. Yes, Stuart, just down here, pitch side, relocated here, and everybody be in the stadium really concerned, of course, for Sione Matauti getting, as you said, the best treatment possible. Barry McDermott, Martin Gleason, a difficult time for both sets of players, and an occasion like this with not long left in the game, and a long stop as well, they'd be concerned about their adversary and their teammate. Uh, of course, first and foremost is to make sure that Sione Matauti is OK. In the back of the minds of every player, it will be, right, what is our next job, what is the job at hand? But it is a little bit unsettling to see your teammate or your opponent um, laid down on the floor, but it, it was a full-blooded challenge, wasn't it? It absolutely was, and they are defending their line, they are under pressure as this Wigan side look to bring home, bring home the bacon in what will be a huge match and a huge victory for them. It would be, and they've been exceptional this second half. The crowd is obviously behind them now. I think while they've got this little bit of time here now, the St. Helens Brain Trust have got to get together because there's still nine minutes left on this court. They'll believe they can still win this game, but they've got to be better than what they have been so far. Well, you can just see them, some going through a warm-up routine, and of course, all concerned for Sione Matautia and his well-being. Worth saying again, though, I think we're proud in the game of the attention we're able to give the players on the field. Everybody recognises what a difficult sport it is to play, what a physical sport it is to play, but immediate attention given to Sione Matautia. The medical staff, it doesn't matter what shirt or badge they have on, they want to make sure that any player, but in this occasion it's Matautia, is OK and gets that important first couple of minutes they have to be absolutely perfect in what they do from this point onwards the crowd of course this huge crowd here behind us they'll be getting a little restless because they, they feel an opportunity now to cheer their team home to a victory they have certainly played their part in creating a very special good friday atmosphere they have and the close but it's not, not it's not there yet i think there's, there's still a lot more rugby to go in and nine minutes is a long time Saints have just got to withstand this last attack from Wigan and then see what they can do when they get the ball back. OK, Jenna is standing by with a man who will know all about the procedures now being put in place around the stricken Sione Matauti. She's standing by pitch side, I believe, Jenna, with Dr Chris Brooks. Yeah, I am, Brian. The Wigan Warriors, Dr Chris Brooks. When something like this happens, of course, nobody ever wants to see. What is the process? The doctors go out. What, 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 what is the process? So, so, Jenna, the key thing is that the St Helens medical team will have practiced this many, many times. So it's, it's a well-organised protocol just in terms of making sure the safety of the player. And the, the key bit is to make sure that the player is taken off the field in a safe way. And, of course, part, part of that is the, the team working, working together in that way to make sure that the player's safety and health is ma maintained. And you know, part of the work that we do in Rugby League, all of the medical teams have been through a, a formal course where they, they work through all of these scenarios so that when this terrible thing happens, then the player's safety can be maintained at all times. Absolutely. Chris Brooks, thank you so much for talking uh, us through that. We really appreciate it. And all the can inside this stadium stand and applaud right. the stricken Sione Matadia as he is carried delicately from the field by this expert medical staff. Our thanks to Chris Brooks for that inside with Jenna. And we can go back to our commentary team now as we await the recommencement of this Good Friday derby game in Rivals Round. Stewart. Thanks, Brian. Yeah, really good insight from Chris Brooks. But all that matters, isn't it, that, is that Sione Matautia is OK. And Wigan will come again with Cooper. And Wigan knowing that another try will do it as they chase a big win against their big rivals. French brought down by Lomax. Eight minutes to go. Eight minutes standing between Wigan and their first win on a good Friday against their bitter rivals in six years, would you believe? Last one. 14 points to six. Eight minutes to go. They go the short side and Smith it is for Farrell and taking no risks. Happy to give the ball back to Saints close to their own line. Yeah, and after a big break, you've really got to reflo refocus and refocus quick. Saints don't have time to edge the way back into it. They, they've got to get organised and they've got to create an opportunity. If not in this set, certainly the next one to have a chance of even coming back and winning this. Well, somehow they've got to get up the other end of the field, haven't they? That's the yeah. first, that's well, that's the first that's, play. That's the difficult thing for them now, isn't it? Because the breaking play, 
has certainly breathed a bit more life into to the Warriors. Feel a bit more energy to close this game down. And all that matters, as we say, is the, is the health of, of Sione Matautia. But, yeah. but from what you were saying, you you kind of feel that the, the break in play, whatever it was, five or six minutes, would favour. Well, a forward pass, it was a poor yeah. pass. But favour Wigan, and that decision's yeah. favoured Wigan. And Wellsby, it was, coming up with the mistake. Well, well look, two of the clock's against them. They've got to, they've they've got got to, have to play up. They've got to try and find a way of... If they can't get through Wigan, they've got to get on the outside of Wigan. And the pass, the, they make the mistake close to the line. Anything they, they see, they've got to go for it. Yeah, it was a great piece of defensive play from Wardle on that left edge. He was aggressive. Now, if you're going to deal with Jack Wellsby, be aggressive, but you've got to be clinical and accurate with how aggressive you are. And we've seen maybe the contrast of that in the two teams, haven't we? Percival with long pass out, oh. not the best of passes. The error this time oh, is offside, Wigan. though. Saints have given offside. Well, that's a big, big call from Liam Moore there. Yeah, would you go for two points here? Yeah, they held it, held it at the base, held it with just one a step. second. There was Percival, Percival just up. And of course, don't forget that Full now from here. a scrub offence isn't just a technical penalty, it's a full penalty. So if they wanted to, they could go for goal, but they're not going to. Well, they'll certainly waste another minute when they've got the ball there if they don't get over the try line. If you go for two, though, yeah. you kick it, short kick off, get the ball back. This is the right decision. Hit the line. Ball. Oh, one. Powell. One more try, and that would be it. You feel Mike Cooper two. charging. Move. What a good, shrewd signing Mike ball. Cooper is proving to be for Wigan after all those years. Some now a bit of cramp as well. Yeah, no, if you're watching when he went into that win. tackle, he, he sort of. You could tell that he hurt himself. Tackle two. It was another stoppage. Mike Cooper's down. I'll tell you what, if Mike Cooper goes down, you know there's something wrong. Yeah, most definitely. Do you know, he's, a, he's an experienced front rower. He's a tough front rower. They brought him in to nurture some of the younger players, the likes of Liam Byrne, Ethan Avard in the side, him and Brad Singleton. Matty Pete identified he needed a bit more experience up front in the pack. But straight away, as soon as he... As soon as he made contact with the floor, it just seemed to buckle on him. Yeah, he's not happy, is he? He's not happy with Mike Cooper. Mm -hmm. But the rest of the Wigan team will be delighted. Their detail, their execution has been excellent. We keep mentioning they've just controlled the pace of this game. Matt Pete's game plan to really muck St. Helens in the Rook has come off as we see Mike Cooper leaving, hobbling off the field here. And not only that, They've been clinical when they've had the ball, taking opportunities. And you just see Cooper driving his legs, driving his legs, spins it's through the, the tackle, and then that. he gets buckled. There's a bit of a knee that comes into him. Look at the side here; it just like goes in there. Yeah, that's your medial ligaments that, and you need to control that lateral movement of your knee. But yeah. Mike Cooper immediately felt some pain. You can see he was grasping at it straight away. Yeah. Right? You know when that goes, you know you've done it, you know. It's quite a common injury in the game. Wigan win. They go second in the Super League table, leapfrogging the Catalan Dragons. Momentarily, of course, Catalan against Warrington, Easter Saturday. Live on Sky Sports, following Lee against Salford from the Sports Village. 14 points to six, five and a half minutes standing between Wigan and a big win as Fretz played the ball through and Wardle just couldn't keep hold of it. Yeah, too much weight on that pass, wasn't there, Wardle? Well, he punched the line, didn't he? And he was through. He catches that ball. The pass just had too much weight on it from Bevan French. Yeah, he just fizzed it, didn't he, Terry? Just a bit too much. Wardle. Yeah, it was just so close to being perfect. French fired it, Wardle couldn't quite take it. But look at the balance of opportunities created. The Saints have created three or four, Wigan have created two or three. And like I've said all along, it's the chances you take that define whether you do well in big games like this. Well, Saints have got four and a half minutes to score points. And you have to say, 
it looks unlikely. Key moments at the end of the first half when Makinson denied by a brilliant try-saving tackle from Bevan French. And then on 67 minutes when Saints had their tails up, they thought they scored through Morgan Knowles to make it 14-10. But it was a fantastic tackle from Joe Shorrox that denied them, and it's 14-6. And those are the things you look at in video review. Yeah. For people at home, when you come into the video cutting room the day after a game like this, if Wigan are to win here, Matty Pete would do well just to show those clips and nothing else. Yeah. Big oh, moments, and this could be Wellsby. Wellsby up against French, goes inside. French makes the tackle. Wellsby knocked down there. Play on, says the referee. Saints wanted a penalty. It was a loose pass out to Dodd, and he's got nowhere to go. Big defence. It could have been a set restart, though, for the second effort. Could have been Jack Wellsby. Yeah. We're going to brilliant, that. brilliant offload. He goes through. Look at him. He's got nobody with him. Bevan French comes up with the tackle. A bit of a second player that could have been a penalty. Should have been a penalty. Should have been a penalty, maybe. Should have been a penalty. 50-50 call. It's not a 50-50 call. It should have been a penalty. He's picked him up and dropped him back on his back again. It's a penalty. But it wasn't. It wasn't, no. no. We're, we're going to have been exquisite and, and disciplined throughout. Just to reiterate, Matt, Matt P in the cutting room, in the video room, will just be showing consistent clips of Wigan turning up for each other defensively. It's been exceptional to watch. Over 24,000 inside the DW Stadium. Yeah, outstanding. Last tackle. Well, with that non penalty, is that Saints' last chance gone? You would think so, as Smith, who has been superb again. And that was making certain it went backwards. Wow. I thought that was a knock on for the well, it, it could easily have been given as a knock on. Yeah. The sun was in his eyes, so they let him off. The ball goes there, he dragged it forward. Two. One off. Two minutes between Wigan and their first win over their bitter rivals on a Cup Friday for six years. They've just done the important things better and they've won the big moments in this game. That's exactly right, yeah. that's the lie. Wigan have won the big moments. They've won every important moment in the game. Saints have been incredible as well. This has been a high, high quality game. Knowles is through. Bellick was with the pass. He's got support. He's got support. And he passes it straight to Joe Sherrod. He delayed the pass. I wonder if he shouts it. Sure. But that's extra effort. Yeah. Again, it's from Joe Sherrod. He puts himself in a position they brought. Look, he knew exactly what he had to do. He had to get himself between the two Saints players if that pass was going to come off. Joe Shorrox. Joe Shorrox. Massive, massive we, effort. We're yeah. talking about players being under pressure coming into a game. Well, there's been under pressure in this delivering. And there's a man out there who's delivered in subtle ways, but massive ways to the value of his team. Morgan and that's Knowles. this man, Joe, Joe Shorrox. Morgan Knowles maybe should have passed a little earlier, but you can't take anything away from Joe Shorrox. Coming back in, Saints on their way to a third defeat of the season, and Joe Shorrox has been involved in two of them. <laughs> one at Lee and one today, That's playing it standoff for the first time in his pro career. Into the last 30 seconds, it's going to be Wigan's day, it's going to be Wigan's Good Friday, and it's going to be a huge Wigan win. Nothing now that St. Helens could do about this. Making to looking for a way through. Inside pass for, for Conrad Horrell. There's a Wigan player down in backfield. Horrell Conrad is brought down. He looks in some discomfort as well. Horrell plays the ball. This is going to be it. The last play all to the game. Lewis Dobb. Ball hits a wicked hand, goes backwards, back it goes to Hopperati. They're going to see what they can do. Bell with the pass. Here is Sirenin now, but Sirenin will go down and Wigan win 
a dramatic, thrilling and pulsating Good Friday derby. Their first Good Friday win in six years over their arch rivals. Wigan, for now, goes second in the Super League table. St Helens suffer a third defeat, but it's Wigan's day, it's Wigan's moment, and it's Wigan's time to celebrate. What a game, just what a game. But we can talk about missed opportunities for St Helens. But Wigan, in the sunshine, at the DW, have produced a 10 out of 10 performance in all of the effort areas. Only had a handful of chances, took every one of them. Look, St Helens up home.